In this video, we're going to focus on the mid-segment of a triangle and some other useful line segments as well. For the beginning part of our discussion, though, we're going to talk about this idea of mid-segment. So it's helpful to know exactly what a mid-segment is. A mid-segment is any line segment that joins the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. So to make matters short, sweet, and easy, let's just say the mid-segment of a triangle is the segment that joins the midpoints of any two sides. So as far as what that might look like in a picture, if we have some random triangle and we have the midpoint of the top side dividing the top side into two equal parts and the midpoint of the bottom side dividing the bottom side into two equal parts, the mid-segment would be that red line segment that connects or joins those two midpoints. Now there's two big key ideas you need to be aware of and know regarding this mid-segment. The first of which has to do with its length. The length of the mid-segment is going to always be exactly half that of the third side of the triangle. So in my little picture over here, the length of this red line segment will be exactly half the length of the purple line segment. So big idea one, the length of the mid-segment is equal to half that of the third side. If you're not particularly fond of fractions, another way of saying that might be to say that the length of the third side is double the length of the mid-segment. So that's the first big idea that you need to be aware of regarding the mid-segment. The second big idea that you need to be aware of regarding the mid-segment is that not only is its length half that of the third side, but he's also parallel to the third side. So in this diagram, this picture I drew over here, the red segment and the purple segment are going to be parallel to each other. So big idea number two, mid-segment is parallel to the third side of the triangle. All right, so let's go take a look at some examples of how we can use this newfound knowledge in order to solve some problems. In example one, they're giving us this big triangle ABC, and they're telling us that points L, M, and N are midpoints of the three sides of the triangle. So in other words, if L is the midpoint of side AB, it's going to divide side AB into two equal parts. If N is the midpoint of side BC, it's going to divide side BC into two equal parts. And likewise, because M is the midpoint of side AC, it's going to divide segment AC into two equal parts. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the question. It says segment LM is parallel to which other segment? Well, if I go find LM, LM is a mid-segment. He's going to be parallel to the third side of the triangle. In this particular case, segment LM is the mid-segment for side BC and will therefore be parallel to side BC. Okay, so segment LM is going to be parallel to segment BC. The next one that they want to take a look at is segment AB. So if I look at the picture, segment AB is that red segment right there. He's going to be parallel to his mid-segment. His mid-segment is segment MN. So I know that segments AB and MN are parallel to each other. Moving right along, it says the length of side or segment AC is 20. And they want us to find the length of LN. Well, LN is the mid-segment for side AC. His length will be half that of AC, making the length of LN 10. In part D, they tell us that the length of MN is equal to 7. So that's this little green fella right here and they want us to find the length of AB. Well, MN is the mid-segment for AB, and will therefore have length equal to half that 
of AB. So because the length of segment MN is 7, length of AB has to be 14. All right, then, and in the last part of this, they're telling us that the length or the distance between points N and C is 9, and they want us to find the length of LM. Well, LM is the mid-segment for side BC, and side BC has a length that's equal to 18, and because LM is the mid-segment for that side of length 18, his length is going to be half of the 18, or in other words, 9. All right, in the second part, or in the second example on this page, they're giving us this big triangle, BCD, where G points G, F, and E are all midpoints. So that makes those smaller line segments all mid-segments. They tell us that the distance between points C and D is 14, and that's going to make the length of mid-segment GE 7. They tell us that the distance between points G and F is 8, and that's going to make the length of side BD equal to 16. And they also tell us that the distance between points G and C is 5, which will make the distance between points B and C 10, and the length of mid-segment EF equal to 5. They want us to now find the perimeter of triangle BCD, well, triangle BCD is the big triangle that I just made purple. So to find the perimeter of triangle BCD, I'm going to take and add the lengths of the sides of triangle BCD. So 10 plus 14 plus 16, or in other words, 40. And they also want us to, in this example, find the perimeter of triangle EFG. Well, triangle EFG is that little fellow made up of by connecting the midpoints or the mid-segments. So the perimeter of triangle EFG is going to be equal to the 8 plus the 7 plus the 5, or in other words, 20. And I'm not going to come right out the, here and say this, but I want you to mentally compare the perimeters of the two triangles and think about what you notice about those two. All right, so that's some interesting facts about mid-segments. At the top of the next page, we're going to do some more vocabulary words, some of which you're already familiar with, others of which uh, will be an introduction to. Angle bisector, you know, is any segment or part of a segment that splits an angle into two equal parts. And I might even go so far as to say splits an angle into two equal angles. Perpendicular bisector, you should know from our discussion, uh, it has a couple different important qualities to it. Number one, it passes through a segment's midpoint. And the other important quality is that it makes right angles. Altitude of a triangle is one that we've talked about briefly, but that hopefully you remember from middle school. The word altitude I like to think of as another word for height. And when we measure height, when you go to the doctor's office, they measure your height standing straight up and down. So in other words, you're making a right angle or you're perpendicular to the floor. So I'm going to say the altitude of a triangle passes through a vertex And in addition, it forms right angles with the opposite side of the triangle. And then the last one, which is a new one, is a median. But if you think about median, where a median is in the road, 
median is in the middle of the road, and its meaning in geometry is very similar. The meaning of median of a triangle connects any midpoint to the opposite vertex. So let's go take a look at what these might look like in a picture. In the given example, they're telling us that segment CD is an altitude. Because segment CD is an altitude, it needs to form or make some right angles. So if I look at the picture, segment CD is that one that I just made blue. He's going to form right angles with the opposite side, or in other words, form right angles with segment AB. They tell us that CE is an angle bisector, but they don't specify which angle it's a bisector for. So I'm going to say it's an angle bisector for angle ABC. Sorry, for angle ACB. So CE is an angle bisector. He's that red segment right there. The, seg the angle that he's an angle bisector for is angle ACB. So that's going to make a couple of congruent angles, those guys in there. And then the last one is median. CF is a median. Remember that the job of a median connects the midpoint to the opposite vertex. So in my picture, CF is that purple line segment. And because his job is to connect a midpoint to an opposite vertex, that makes point F a midpoint, which makes segment AF and segment BF congruent to each other. So now all we need to do is go ahead and answer the question. Part A says state two congruent angles, each of which has a vertex at C. Well, the two that we marked congruent in our picture is angle ACE. So angle ACE is going to be congruent to angle ECB. Part B says to state two line segments that are congruent to each other. Well, the two in our picture that we said are congruent are segments AF and BF. And then lastly, part C says state two line segments that are perpendicular to each other. Well, if I look in my picture, the right angles are formed here at point D. So therefore, segment CD is going to be perpendicular to segment AB. All right. As always, I want you to take a few minutes to reflect on what you've seen in the video and see if you can apply your newfound knowledge in order to match up the questions in number two.